Soften your senses. Ways to become a better speaker, listener, and follower. This session was recorded live at the 2023 National HVACR Education Conference. Learn more about the UA at ua.org. Well, thank you all for joining us today. We're going to hang out with Brian Kelly from the UA. And um, man, Brian, what, what, a, what a topic. How do you prepare to be a new person in the industry? To, to prepare a new person in the industry, I mean, you just have a, a willingness to, to want to work with your hands, to want to learn each and every day. I mean, that's, that's the key. In, in HVACR, you are learning every day. And if you're not, you're, you, you won't survive. You know, I think back about my days when I got into the trade. You know, I, I started out in a small family, ran business. We did refrigeration. We did HVAC. But that, that person mentoring me along the way taught me a lot about the soft skills, about being a person, about actually showing up for work and having a positive attitude. So how, do you, how does that play just in work ethic alone? Because I know that this is something that you could probably you know, spend a lot of time educating on. Yeah, I mean, so so work ethic, you know, for me personally, I think that is something that's that's integral to a person. I mean, I think people are naturally born with that. Right. And you know, if if you, you know, the whole key to this this whole industry. I mean, if you you can start with no prior experience, if you have the ability to show up on time, you know, <clears throat> you show up with a good attitude, you know, you 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 hustle. You don't have to know anything, but if you're given a task by 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 say somebody that's mentoring you. Do that task like it's, you know, if, you, if, if he's asked to, you to sweep the floor, make it the cleanest floor <laughs> on the planet. I mean, if you have that that within you, everything else is teachable. Yeah, because I get that question all the time from, you know, friends, educators, contractors. How do you teach somebody to want to clean their van out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, if, you, if, you, if I knew the answer to that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here with you, right? That's right. So, you know, but the, the, the truth of the matter is, is when, you, when you're organized, you're, you're a much better technician because you, you can find things, you can do things more, more efficiently, and you do a better job for the customer. Yeah, absolutely. So I think back about those early days of getting into the trade and, you know, what things would I want someone to tell me about the trades and how to prepare myself for working in the trades. You know, one, that's right, you, you have to mentally want to learn you have to enjoy working with your hands, and that's a little bit different of a, a trait in today's generation that was, you know, like when you and I were growing up. And, you know, when you and I were growing up, it was kind of expected that you worked on your own bike. It was kind of expected that you, you know, broke things and maybe tried fixing things. And that's somewhat changed as we've moved into a disposable industry. But in, in our world, in HVAC and refrigeration, uh, it's not... So the case, we're still here to fix things and learning how to, um, you know, use your hands if you don't already use your hands. So like, say I'm a, I'm a young technician coming into the trade and I'm looking at HVAC and refrigeration classes. Um, you know, what should be my expectations of using my hands to work? Yeah, well, using your hands to work and using, using tools and that, that doesn't mean your iPhone, right? <laughs> on, on occasion, it, it's, it, it is there to, to, to help. And, you know, with technology, the, the iPhone and, and how-to videos are sh- certainly helpful. Right. But, but before you get to that point, you know, you need to know the basics. I mean, you need to know the basics, how to use regular hand tools. Um, and, again, I, I still go back to, 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 you know, a clear mind showing up with a good attitude and all that. Anything can be taught. But certainly... You know, when you like you mentioned earlier, the kids today aren't using tools. They're not working on their own bikes. They're not working on cars. Everything is automated. So it does present a new set of challenges mm-hmm. for today. Yeah, that's what I, I get from a lot of our educators is how do we work with our younger generations to encourage them to want to work? Because this industry is a very physical industry. You know, there's a, a lot of using your hands. There's a lot of you know carrying weight and tools and maneuvering ladders, and so there's a, a physical component to it that may not always be as well received. But I think we were all that way. I mean, let's think about when we got into the trades. I don't know that I was ever excited to crawl into a crawl space. <laughs> Sh- sharp mind and sharp, sharp body will get you in a get 
you know, bring you a long way in life, I'll tell you. <laughs> and, I, and, and, you know, something else, for, especially for young people coming into the trade, it's very important to understand that, you know, you know, guys like us that have that, that have been worked their whole careers in the trade, we can look back and say, "Man, what a wonderful trade!" And I and I still, this is one. I I'd probably say this is the best trade on the planet. Um, but not every experience is going to be positive. And right. one thing that you really need to remember is even bad experiences are learning experiences. And as long as you as long as you continue to learn each and every day. Um, that's where you're going to find your success. Exactly. And this industry is the uh, the epitome of daily learning. That's what kept me in this industry. I, when I got into HVAC, I didn't know that I was going to stay here for a career. You know, it was a good paying job. It was a family business that I had married into. And it just, um, it was it was a job, like many jobs. And then 20-some years later, I'm still experiencing new opportunities, you know, new ways to push my own personal limits. So when we talk about preparing students to work with their hands and, and being in a physical environment, I think it's very important that we help them understand that they're now able to learn a craft, and this is absolutely a craft, where you can create and fix and repair and do things with your hands that many people will never have the opportunity to do in their life. Sure. And not only that, not only can you fix, install, fix heating and air conditioning, but you know, for an HVAC tech, everybody, anyone that's listening to this knows fully well, you can't be a, uh, an accomplished HVAC technician unless you know electrical, that's unless you right. know plumbing. I mean, it's the combination of a whole bunch of trades wrapped in and I'll tell you, you know, it has pros and cons. When you own your own house, you can do everything, uh, everything on your own. But, you know, when you get home from work, you're not necessarily <laughs> right. wanting to do that, right? So. <laughs> kind of goes back to the old notage of, you know, the uh, the mechanic that drives the beater when he comes home because he fixes them all day and he doesn't want to fix his own. Oh, that can sometimes happen. So true, industry. so true. <laughs> but it is a, a very, very stable career. You know, it's, it's a job where you learn skills. And, you know, maybe with our younger generation, they haven't had the opportunity to learn that value in self-diagnostics and self-repair. The gratification that comes from taking something that is broken, broken and turning it into something that is almost a new creation. And so being able to take a project, evaluate a project, and dive into it. And I know it can be very intimidating to you know, try to learn new skills that you may not have been associated to growing up because it has changed. The industry has changed so much. We don't have the things to work on that we used to as young kids, you know, tear into and fix and play with and because so much of it is electronic and disposable. But in the, the evolution of work, when we get into the field, we have all of these things to now learn and experience. And it adds so much character and dynamic to your life. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with young students. You know, they're, they're learning HVAC and refrigeration and they'll come back and go, you know what I did this weekend? I tore the brakes off of my car. Yeah, you know, and, and it's so true. And once you have the, once you get that, you know, that, that initial itch, once you get the vibe to, to really start diving in and you have, you know, you have to do it at work and, and that gives you the, you know, the, the, the confidence, if you will, to, to tackle anything because, you know, let's face it, HVAC technicians primarily or a high percentage of the time are working by themselves. Yeah. And if, and if you can't fix it, it's not getting fixed. That's so, exactly right. you know, so it, it, it does build as, especially as you grow in your career, you build that self-confidence that Pride. Man, the, man, there's nothing that I can't fix, <laughs> right? You know, uh, when you're teaching classes and you're teaching students, it's always neat to see that development, like that spark, because you see that spark when they finally, they work on something and they turn around and they go, I did that. I made this happen. I figured this out. And it just continues to grow. You know, I, I get a lot of times people go, man, how'd you learn to work on that? I was like, well, it was broken, so... I was taught that if it was broken, you attempt to fix it. <laughs> yeah, man, that was probably the most satisfying time of my career when I was when I was an instructor. I I, I taught HVACR for five years, and 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 you know when you when you see somebody sitting in the in in your classroom and 
and all of a sudden you see that light bulb goes off. <laughs> I, I mean, man, driving home, that's the best feeling in the whole entire world. And, you know, it, one of the other things to understand, too, especially as a, as a former instructor, you know, when you, not, not every student learns the same way. So no. when, as an educator, if, if you have, if, if you can put it into different words or maybe, you know, explain it in a couple of different ways, the same same approach to, to, to a solution. Paint a different picture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I think that's really the key to being a, a really, it, it take, you know, from an average instructor to a great instructor mm. is being able to reach more of your audience. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing that I've had the ability to learn so much in the last few years by talking to other educators and, you know, listening to people who have had these experiences in life is that many times we get stuck in a rut where we're teaching the same way and the outcome is changing so is is it in the students or is it in our own delivery <laughs> I, I tend to think it's in the delivery i do as well you know because if like i said if you can take if you can explain the same the, the same solution to a problem in a in a couple or a few different ways you know you'll you'll look around the room and you you tend as, as you you know as you've been doing this for a little while you know you you can see those light bulbs going off and it, it's really it's satisfying yeah, I had a conversation with another colleague here recently about the um, the way that our content is being received is different than it was a generation ago and a generation before that. So I've done a lot of time studying, you know, the the way that we interpret and receive content. And if we look at our society, our society has changed and our delivery methods have changed. So if we continue to teach with the same um, the same platform that we've always used and we start seeing that our class is not participating as much and that our grades are diminishing, it's time to start looking for new avenues for instructional delivery. And that's what we, uh, we've done a lot in the last few years is looked at new ways to deliver content because HVAC and refrigeration and electrical plumbing, I mean, th these concepts, yeah, we have an evolution of them, but the fundamentals are never really going to change. Best we look at like refrigeration. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and in fact, you know, certainly what I found in my experience is, you know, the lion chair people that, that, that choose to come into a trade for one reason or another, but probably the most, um, most often heard reason I've heard is because they just didn't want to go to college. Yeah, they were just, exactly. they didn't want to sit in a classroom. So... Most of our folks, let's face it, they learn better by doing. So hey, hands on. The hands on. When you incorporate hands on into in, into theory, or you you know you um, you know you just punctuate it with a little hands on and showing them exactly what that theory is all about. You know, real time. Uh, that that's where that's where you really get the results. Yeah, I absolutely agree. All right, good stuff, Brian. I really appreciate you joining us today, and um, let's go pick another topic to talk about. Sure. Anytime. Awesome. Thank you.